for the union, what you trying to do? Cause I'm open to it. I know that you miss him, but you gon' get through it. Hey, yo, what's game man players? It's your boy, Disney Sharp Man, back out here on this Madden 21 franchise mode. And we are back with another 1 o'clock scheduled game here in week number 15. Now, in this matchup, no playoff implications, but one team is in playoff positioning, the other is not. The Detroit Lions, as you guys know, they got knocked out of the playoffs in their last in their last game when they lost to the Green Bay Packers. They're in Nashville to face off with Christopher Parsons and the Tennessee Titans, who come in at 12 and 1. Off to a pretty good start. Currently the third seed in the AFC, despite Kansas City, despite the way Despite how Kansas City will play against New Orleans in the 4 o'clock schedule game, if Tennessee can come out on top, and if Kansas City loses to the Saints, then Tennessee will jump over Kansas City and get the third, get from third to second in the AFC playoffs. But if both Tennessee and Kansas City both win their games, then it then that will stay exactly the same. But if, but if you haven't seen the rest of the games here in week 15, be sure to go check those games out so you won't miss a single, a single one of these. And if you're new to the series, welcome aboard because we've already got 14 weeks settled and ready for you, ready for you to look at since you're new to the series if you haven't seen any of the games here in the Madden 21 season. So be sure to go check out those games if you haven't if you haven't seen them, or if you're new to the series. Now, these last few weeks of the season, it's gonna be basically all about the pro, all about the postseason. Cause some teams are keeping their playoff hopes alive, like the Texans are doing in the AFC, the Bucks and Falcons trying to keep their playoff hopes alive as well. They play each other right after this game, so so get ready, folks, cause it's about it's about to be it's about to be some amazing fun here in the rest of these games here in week 15. So let's head down to Tennessee. As I said, no playoff implications here. The Tennessee Titans have already clinched a spot in the postseason. So yeah. So basically they have nothing to play for at this point, but only where they're gonna stand in the postseason. Let's go. And the Detroit Lions, they've also got nothing to play for since they're already eliminated. Chilly rain from last night has moved on. The temps have bumped up a bit here at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. This crowd here fired up for football as a moment ago their Titans were introduced. This should be a good one as the Titans get set to match up with the Detroit Lions. And there's Josh Levine. He's still having a tremendous season even though he's battling for the number one receiving yards list. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks. And the Lions, the they're going to get the ball first. So the Titans will kick it off. So Ryan Gilmore and the guys, they're going to come out onto the field to begin the game. Since they've already been eliminated from postseason, 
Let's see how they will finish the season off in these next few weeks as we're underway from Nashville. And this was not going to be returned, so Ryan Gilmore set to lead this Lions offense and leading them out. As I mentioned, Ryan Gilmore. I love this quote during the week. If I were a defensive back, I would have wanted to play against me last week as well. He's trying to eliminate those turnovers, those interceptions, and get back on the positive side of the ledger throwing touchdown passes. Yeah, had four of those picks led to the loss. First and 10 here for Detroit. They're going to hand it off. It's DeAndre Swift. And he gets a gain of five, gets it to the 30. Nine carries, 63 yards, and a touchdown. And that's just not enough carries for a running back to get loose and really feel like he's into the game because they have to have enough volume to establish a rhythm, not just for themselves, but also to get in sync with their offensive line so they can read the blocks properly. And Gilmore, he's brought down. And the Titans able to bring him down. Jayon Brown. He gets the sack that time. gets there for a loss of 12. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Gilmore, an open receiver is Cam Baker. And he gets this to the 40-yard line on the first down for Detroit. Third down conversion. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. That duel of Gilmore and Baker, they're, they're connecting really well. This is hoping to connect more often. And he slip. And he will be brought and they'll get him down at the 43. The two yards on the pickup. A gain of two, second, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Here's second and eight. Flush to his right. Gilmore throwing on the run and wide open it's Baker and he gets this to the 13 yard line what a play it's a big play there for the Lions 44 yards well, how about the passing numbers so far on this first drive oh, no doubt about it They're it looked like Gilmore was about to get sacked or he was going to throw it away but that we see in him he saw Cameron Baker running across the middle the of the field to get right open. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Gilmore, an open is the tight end. It's Hawkinson. And, the Lions are looking and now the Lions have themselves a first and goal at the two. two. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, he did everything but get him in the end zone there, but now they're set up. Golden opportunity, strong opening drive, and they're knocking on the door. And the way that they did it, now look where they are on the field, right? This is naturally set up for a running play, isn't it? But with his ability to throw the football... Gilmore on the run, firing end zone, and what a catch by Hawkinson. Touchdown, Detroit. TJ Hawkinson, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Lions take it right down and score on the opening drive. Building confidence after a loss, that's a good way to do it. The loss last game, but first drive here in this one, cashing it in for six. And they can talk all they want about putting a loss behind them. I think that drive there did more than any conversation they had, don't you think? That's exactly right. Puts that to Matt Prater puts in the extra point. It's 7 nothing Detroit. They needed to do differently. Whatever they said appears to have worked. Nothing. Extra point good by Prater. And it's now a 7 nothing game. Mm 
Matt Prater to kick off for Detroit. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And here's Humphreys on a return. And, and they're going to get him the down at the 27-yard line. So, the Titans set to so now the Titans the set to take time. over. And they'll be led out by the man and leading the them, Charles, the Christopher Parsons, who's having a good season. something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, He's buying gifts for all the guys who helped him <laughs> along the way. And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you. You know, at the end of the season. First play, they hand it to Henry. QB, he's usually and not much there. He's stuff. taken down right at the 27. On the tackle. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard. But they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, and they're going to hand it to Henry again. Like down, and, and this time he loses yardage to the, the 25. He's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. For the Lions, an extra DB in the game now here on third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Parsons looking deep. He's got Levine downfield and he dropped it. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. And no return here for Cam Baker. And, a great job and they're going to down this one right at the four-yard line. Down inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. <laughs> Coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. Gilmore, Catch and he's going to find Hawkinson. The tight end. And, and he's going to get this to the 16 and a first down. Try to find some space to operate, and now they'll have it. A gain of 12, a big first down to get away from the end zone. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Gilmore and open and is Cam Baker, right but he was out of bounds. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Gilmore and open again is Baker. And Cam Baker going down the right sideline. And gives it to the 24. A big play there on the catch and run. And even 60 yards. Pretty good timing. He waited just enough for that post play to develop and laid it right in there. And you know what a lot of teams do when they decide to throw a post route? Because it's a little bit longer developing play. They max protect. Bring everyone in. Keep the tight end in. An extra back to make sure the quarterback has time to deliver the Gilmore. Ball. And he's going to find Swift, who breaks a tackle. And and gets down, this to the four yard the line. Brings up a first and goal. Line. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. And this should probably be the last play of the quarter. It's Gilmore throwing, and he's going to complete this one to Hawkinson, and he's going to lose yardage to the seven. After one seven nothing on EA Sports. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. Here's Gilmore yet again. Looking for somebody, he's gonna run, and he's shy of the goal line, tackled at the one. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down.
Wow, so now it's third and go from the one. And Gilmore is going to think about running, but he fumbled. And Johnson recovers for Lions touchdown. Carry on Johnson. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Lions add on to their lead. Matt Prater lining up for the point after. Brandon, would you say they went from agony to elation in just a few quick seconds on that point? Extra point is good. And the Lions take a 14-0 lead against the Titans. They drew it up and said this is the way it's supposed to be done. It just happened. But the end will justify the means. Wow, so how about Detroit coming out and taking a quick 14-0 lead against the Titans who are basically coming in at third place in the AFC playoffs. And I don't think that's that's the way you want to start the game. And here's Henry. And they're going to get him down at the 32, a gain of 7. It's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. A shotgun handoff. And here's Henry, and he's going to pick up a first down at the 39. Seven yards there. Carry there by Derrick Henry picks up a first down. And when you say workhorse, you're thinking about Derrick Henry. Won the rushing title in 2019 with 1,540 yards on the ground and 16 rushing touchdowns. Went to his first Pro Bowl. Parsons throwing right AFC side, and that one's going to be incomplete. The scoreboard tells the story for him a little bit bleak, and while it's not quite desperation time yet, it's definitely getting close. But the defense reads the scoreboard as well. They're going to back up and make him really earn it. On second down, and they're going to hand it to Derrick Henry, and Henry now. And he's going to get this to the 43 and a first down for Tennessee. some of the slack because remember the last drive they went three and out so the ball moves into lion territory now here's first and ten at the 43 parsons now connects it's levine and levine's got space he's got a titan touchdown Two scores early. They needed something to try to stem that tide, and that certainly qualifies a big play to get them in the end zone. It qualifies indeed because, let's face it, they don't get something done on this drive. Turn it back over. This game could be 88 out the gate. Extra right? point is good, and the Titans cut the lead to seven. It's 14 to seven. Usually, man, that thing's done. And this one's going to be returned. And, it's a pretty good and they're going to get him down right at the 29. At their own 29. And here comes Ryan Gilmore and Cameron Baker back. Well, Cam Baker back out there. And the Titans are already having trouble stopping this duo. And they're going to have to make some game. They're going to have to make some game changes if they want to overcome this deficit. Offense ready to kick off their next drive as the season winds down and you look at them in totality. You know, the offense has struggled. The defense has been pretty good, so I would imagine the changes this offseason. Gilmore. And look at this. Is Cam Baker is Cam Baker again? I don't understand how the Titans are leaving them wide open like that. 
change a quarterback running back it didn't look like it, it looked like for a second that he wasn't open but when Gilmore so threw it he ended up wide open and the win column will result So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Gilmore, and open is Hawkinson. And they're going to get him down inside the 20 to the 19. Now they, they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? So here's a first and ten now down inside the 20. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Gilmore, and again he finds Baker. And they're going to get him at the four-yard line. Brings up a first and goal. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry? ball gets tipped in the air because if that happens then it's fair game for the defense so three plays already first and goal and they are wasting little time we've hit the two minute mark of the second quarter 14 to 7 a reminder once we hit halftime as we do all season we'll send it down to jonathan coachman in orlando he'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the nfl gilmore he's trying to run and he's going to get rid of this one. Down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. Gilmore looking around. Throwing Enzo. And it's caught, but out of bounds. Are you serious? Cam Baker could have gotten... He could have gotten a touchdown. But Gilmore should have thrown that a bit sooner. He's looking again. He's going to fire. And Baker had it again, but he dropped it. Wow. And Matt Prater puts in the field goal to extend the lead to 17-7. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that's the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. Prater now will send it away following the made field goal. And Humphreys, he's not going to return and this one as this one's going to be a touchback. So we will start here at the 25. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And that last touchdown drive, a good mix of pass and run. Defensively, they just looked a little out of whack. And it's so hard to stay up with an offense that has things going so well. Parsons, guessing, and he's going to find Henry. Oh, and what a stiff arm by Henry. He picks up a first down. But man, that was a brutal stiff arm. And I think that was Josh Terry who got, the, who got in that mix. Let's take a look at that again. I think that was Josh Terry who got in that mix. And yes, he was. Ooh. <laughs> that was a brutal stiff arm. That's the thing about Derrick Henry. Those stiff arms. Man. If they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one score game at half that might provide a cycle. Parsons. And that's intercepted. Justin Coleman picks it. And the Lions, they're going to take over. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay. 
where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you got a decent chance. So of Gilmore and Alliance with the chance to extend the lead. Gilmore Slides going for Baker, end. and he that dropped it. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. So second down and ten. Once again, they'll go from the forty. Gilmore and he's brought down. Taken down. Back right around the 48 yard line. Jack Crawford. Jack Crawford was the one to get the sack. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Gilmore. Oh, that one could have been picked off. Starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. And Levine's not going to return this started, one. This one's going to bounce at the end zone. Thinking about the Titans take over first and ten at their own twenty yard. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively, and with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Carson, and he's going to connect with Levine. And the Titans are going to use one of their timeouts. As it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now back to throw. Flush to his right. Now he's going to throw Carson. Right side. And that's Carson intercepted. intercepted. Jeff Akuda picks it. The Titans are going to have to. They're going to have to get things together because. So because they're going to get the ball either way to start the second half and they're going to have to get things together. The Detroit Lions are going to go into halftime with a 10 point lead on the road. Okay Brandon, time for a sprint to the finish as it's time to get you caught up with what's happening around the NFL here in a pivotal week 15. Up next, it's an AFC South battle in Atlanta. The 8-5 Falcons play O's to the 8-5 Buccaneers. Then we're going to be up in Baltimore. The Ravens, with, with a dominating victory in their last game, they play host to the 1-12 Jacksonville Jaguars. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. So in the All first right, half, Coach, the Lions with a 10-point lead over the Tennessee Titans. Basically, a team who's not in playoff positioning has the lead against a team who is in playoff formation. And the Titans will get the ball to start the second half, and they will start at the 25. And here comes Christopher Parsons. Now, the game he's had, it's been okay, but, but we're hoping to get some improvement out of him. But that duo is still connecting, but they're trailing right now on the scoreboard, and they, they need some big plays to go their way. Because you saw on back to back drives in the first half, Carson's through two straight interceptions. Carson's, and that's caught. It's Levine. And they're going to get him down at the 48 yard line, right across midfield. First down. See if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. 
So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and ten at the 48-yard line. Derek Henry. Man, I hand it to Henry. To and he's going to get this to the 46. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up. And, and here's Henry. And they're going to get him down at the 41 yard line. Shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit. Parsons, and he's going to connect with Levine. And he's got another Titan first. Last time, now they double it and get 10 here. That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. Well, that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. Parsons, and that one was not the way. All the receiver had to do was just stand where he was because he was wide open. Just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. And Henry, and he gets smothered in the backfield by KJ Anthony. And if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That to me, that's good scouting. Parsons. And, and that one's in intercepted. Picked off by Justin Coleman. Justin Coleman. Real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position. Are you serious? Christopher Parsons nice never throws going. that many interceptions. That that's three in the game now. Here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. And they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Gilmore, and look at this Baker is open again. And he's got another first down. Across midfield. It's a gain of 34. What a game it's been for this duo. They remind me of a good comedy team. They know how to play off of each other so well. No matter how one riffs, the other's right there to pick them up. And they are shredding them in this ballgame. They'll look to throw here on first down. And Gilmore, he's going to be set. Vic Beasley, he was the one to get there. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Gilmore, and that's complete. It's Baker. I get a, a gain of 11, brings up third down. An extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Gilmore, and, and he was going to think about throwing it away, but instead incomplete. Pass rushes are designed for different things. Sometimes you want to keep the quarterback in the pocket. Sometimes you want him to flush. I don't know exactly how this one was designed, but they made sure they moved him to his right. He and Levine's not going to return it. This one's going to bounce into the end zone. And that resulted in an incompletion. Comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And in enemy territory last time through the interception. We'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? Parsons. And he's going to find Josh Levine. And Josh Levine. He's got a Titan touchdown. Close game again. 
One play, 80 yards. Pretty easy drive to recount. <laughs> it certainly is, but not so easy to execute. Starting on your own 20. You want the extra point is good, and the Titans nice cut the lead to a three-point game. Got it. That's a great way to send a message to the opposing team. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. Taken in the and end this zone. one's not going to be returned, and, and this one's going to be a touchback. He will not attempt to return. Yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Looking Gilmore to looking Jones. deep. That and it's incomplete. incomplete. It was he was looking for Mar he was looking for Jones that time. The he was looking for Marvin Jones the there. Second down. So they went for the bigger shot. Went for it all on that one. This time they were ready for it. Gilmore and it's incomplete. And Gilmore is sad. Jack Crawford, he gets the sack. Absolutely, maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. Here comes the Lions punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And here's Levine, and... He's going to be brought down at the 43, which We're brings the third the quarter, quarter to a close. Week 15. Happy holidays to all. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Parsons trying to run right, and he goes and down. He goes. Jamie Collins. Was the one to get him. Jamie Collins. He's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. Back to throw now on second and ten. Parsons, and that one is caught. Levine with the grab, first down. 15 yards on the play, first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy tackle. Levine type of is putting his team on his as, back. I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Flushed out right. He's gonna fire Parsons looking end Enzo ball. for Levine. It's and it's Took incomplete. They come up second and ten. Parsons, and that was Looking knocked away. Line, but it's incomplete. And a lot of being a defender is being able to learn what you can and can't get away with winning man coverage. In this case, he got away with it and helped pop that ball free. Parsons, and open, it's Levine again. Touchdown, Tennessee. Seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through. The Extra through. point. Go ahead and throw Got it. 21 17. We are not done yet. Extra point right down the middle. And that will make this a four point game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this one sent away, three. taken at the three yard line. And, a good return, and they're so going to get him down shy of the 30 to the 29. At their own 29 yard line. 
Detroit's offense ready to take over. And now they'll look to answer working from behind. And remember, this offense is sputtered yet to score here in the second half. They'll need to change that here. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Gilmore. And look at this. It's Galladay who gets open. And he's got a Detroit touchdown. Touchdown, Detroit. Kenny Galladay, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Lions are going to jump back in front. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie. Because usually your rookie season Extra is point. a continuation got it. of your college And the Lions retake the lead. If you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more. Reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. Matt Prater to kick off for Detroit. Is Matt yeah, Prater to, to kick it away? Is Prater to kick. And this one's not going to be returned. So this one's going to be a touchback. So we will start here at the 25. The Titans now just about ready to take over. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. They begin with Henry. And here's Henry. And, this will be a gain of and they're going to get him down the at the 30-yard line. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure you're back. You spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Eluding the pressure right. Parsons. And he will and throw it away. He's going to go out of bounds. Scrimmage, so that's a sack. That second down play nets a minus four. A loss of four on that on one. Down, Brings throw. up third down, and Parsons finds Levine. And, and that's going to be a Titan first. Third down conversion. For 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best Parsons, the and that you one, oh, screen. it's incomplete. With you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? Parsons throwing for Levine again, and he's got it again. Josh Levine is putting his team on his back. They have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sideline and here's Henry to trying to power his way through. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. A gain of only a couple. Second down. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground. Honed in on it and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's Carson's caught by Henry. And they're gonna get him at the 10 yard line. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. Third and two. So the Titans in if the Lions can get a stop here, then the Titans, down, but they are they're going to have to make a decision on fourth and t on fourth down. And Parsons finds Henry and he goes backwards. What? Back oh 18. my goodness. Derrick Henry was never down. free. Oh, the grain here. It totally goes so the Titans are going to settle for three. And the field goal is good. And the Titans have tied up the game. So big kick to get this back to even. Now the worry is to 
Did you leave too much time on the clock? Because another field goal the other way, that does you in. You're exactly right. You didn't get into overtime yet. So now as a defense, you've got to think to yourself, you can't play prevent defense. And Just here's the return. And they're going to get him down you. right at the 22-yard line. And the Lions, they're set to take over possession. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And last time the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up. Whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drive is exactly what you want on offense. But they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. Gilmore. And he's brought down. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Daquan Jones, Jones was the one to get the sack, and the Lions are gonna play hurry up. Gilmore downfield, and that's picked off. his second year in the league as a quarterback but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape he's like ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball no doubt about it and his coaching staff will be so now the Titans have, have the ball, ball. Remember, they can win the game noted, with a field goal training. or better so he's got to take this feedback and Parsons he's going to get rid of this pass with 40 seconds remaining and he'll toss this one incomplete seeing no options he throws it away Joseph He's warming up on the sideline. So the Titans need to get to at least the 38 in enemy territory. And Parsons finds Jonu Smith. And and Parsons, he's gonna spike it. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? So on second down. It used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three and Henry and breaks a tackle and he is stopped. And catch the balls we just saw there. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. Third down and Parsons this finds Derrick Henry. And even though he's not going to get the first, look how smart that was. Henry went down, had the clock go down to the last few seconds. The Titans called the timeout. And it's all on Greg Joseph. If he can make this, if, if Greg Joseph makes it, then the Tennessee Titans are gonna walk off are gonna walk off with a victory but if not we will go to overtime building here's Greg Joseph this from 52 and this for the win Greg Joseph to increase the record for Tennessee to 13 and 1 this for the W and Joseph got it and Tennessee Wins the game. What a game between these two teams. It was back and forth, back and forth in the second half. Well, not only in the second half, in the fourth. In the fourth quarter, out of all quarters. But what a game. So for Tennessee, they continue to make their case as a Super Bowl favorite as they move to 13-1. and one. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the Green Bay Packers. Meanwhile, for Detroit, their slim playoff hopes are gone now as they fall to 5-9. and nine. And they'll look to get back on the beam next week as they host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. Wow. You see? You see how I mean? I'm telling you, you may never know when any of these games are going to be close. You may never know. And this game was a was a tight one and it was led to Greg Joseph kicking the game winning field goal to win the game for Tennessee and to keep their spot well not only their spot 
but the second seed alive with a 27-24 victory against the Detroit Lions. What a game it was. Here are the stats. Ryan Gilmore threw for 351, two touchdowns, one pick. And that and I don't know that interception might have cost Detroit, but he did play a good game. Christopher Parsons, he had started with one touchdown and three picks. Well, well, he had two interceptions, but then in the second half, he threw three touchdowns and only one interception, and that turned the whole game around. He finishes with 339, three touchdowns, three picks, but even though his team got the victory. Here's the running game. Derrick Henry, 11 carries for 41. DeAndre Swift, 3 carries for 11, and Gilmore ran 3 times for 4. And here's the receiving, Josh Levine, he continues to have his best season receiving, 9, nine catches for 295, 3 touchdowns, he was putting his team on his back. Cam Baker, 7 catches for 220, Kenny Galladay, a catch for 71 yards and a touchdown. TJ Hawkinson, 5 catches for 40 and a touchdown. Derrick Henry, 4 catches for 24. Jonu Smith, a catch for 20. And DeAndre Swift, he also got a catch for 20. So for Tennessee, they continue to improve and make themselves a Super Bowl favorite as they improve to 13-1. And they will hit the road in week 16 for a matchup with the Green Bay Packers, which should be a showdown. Meanwhile, for Detroit, they fall now to now 5-9 with the loss here. And they will have a chance to rebound in their next game as they head home to take on Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But man, what a game this was. The Lions and Titans, it was a pretty good one. Next game, the NFC South battle we've all been waiting on. Bucks and Falcons, they're both battling for the seventh seed for the next few weeks. With the Panthers lost to Green Bay, that automatically made, made sure that the Panthers will not have another opportunity. So now it's all only down to the Buccaneers and Falcons to battle that 7 seed. But if you enjoyed this game, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Next game up, Tom Brady and the 8-5 and five Tampa Bay Buccaneers do battle with Josh Martin and the 8-5 and five Atlanta Falcons. An NFC South battle, two teams who are battling. For that 7th seed in the NFC playoffs.